Thank you so much for being here. It's Joachim Gomez signing out from the Shock Circuit. Have a good morning. I'm Joachim Gomez, radio DJ, TV host, and occasional actor. Sounds delicious. When I'm off the air, I lace up and take off. I want to explore different parts of Singapore, particularly neighborhoods that seem to have a bad rap. In this episode, I'm going to Serangoon Road. I want to find the wow side to this bad boy. I learn how to make thosai from a master chef. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, mistake. Ah! Find food that can be found nowhere else in Singapore. There is special Bangladeshi fish. It's called Himsa fish. This Himsa fish is Bangladesh national fish. And discover why it's listed as one of the world's coolest cities. So we are here at Little India Bangapolo. Being half Indian, I feel a sense of connection to this bustling neighbourhood that feels like a slice of India. Ah, <sighs> day. Anyway, for Little India, I've been coming here since a kid. I spend time with family here as well. So when Time Out ranked this place 19th out of the 51 coolest neighbourhoods in the world, I was very happy. Each year, Time Out publishes a list of world's coolest neighbourhoods. While Little India ranks behind Cambodia's Wat Bo village at number 3, it is way ahead of Ubud in Bali at number 42. What exactly does a neighbourhood need to have to become one of the coolest in the world? I'm meeting Cheryl Sakapan, one of the editors in Time Out who was involved in putting Little India on the world map. And I'm asked to meet her at... Deska Road? Wait. Isn't Deska Road infamously known for prostitution? So Cheryl, you chose to meet at Deska Road despite knowing its reputation. Why so? Yeah, it's interesting because Deska Road used to be a red light district. But since the pandemic, a lot of the activities have died down. So if you walk around here in the day or at night, you won't see any of that anymore. So how did Deska Road help Little India become a cool neighbourhood? There's been so many like cool and trendy things that have popped up on Deska Road, like a French bistro down the street, an artisanal gelato place back there, and then like a cat hotel, a pretty swanky one. And of course, what's really interesting here is Singapore's only street immersive audio experience called New Walls End by O Open House. I think Deska Road really helped put Little India on the list. O Open House unveils the untold tales of Jalan Besar. Step into back alleys, hidden fantasy rooms, and unravel forgotten histories in this permanent immersive theatre experience. So aside from Deska Road, what else can you show me about Little India? Oh, let's go and see. Okay. okay. So we're in a really great place now to look at all the colourful murals in Little India. The murals are part of why Little India made it to our list. Personally, what do you like about Little India? My favourite thing about Little India has to be the history and culture that you can find in Little India. Can you tell me some of the street names that you see here? Um, <laughs> like exam, you know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we've got Clive Street, there's Dixon Road, there's Weld Road, Dunlop Street is there, there's Campbell, there's Rowell, and then yeah. Vera Sami. So, Vera Sami aside, I'm guessing there's plenty of European influence here? Yeah, so there's a lot of interesting history, European, Indian. So if you want to find out more, there's someone waiting for you on Belly Lost Name. Okay. Why don't you head over? Hidden Heritage author Rajesh Rai is waiting for me at Belelos Lane, which is a five-minute walk away. Mr. Rajesh, why did you choose to meet me at this um, beer garden-looking place? It's not exactly a beer garden. Have a look at these pigs. Oh, okay, I see the structure, the pyramid, and this uh, a tap house-looking thing. So, this indeed was an area where you used to have cow sheds in the past. It belonged to a European Jewish cattle trader, dairy farmer. Uh, by the name of Belilios. So his sheds were located in this area. So all those years ago, a European in Little India, how did that happen? In fact, there were many Europeans in this area. There were those who were engaged in plantations, growing things like different crops, sugarcane and so on and so forth. But even more than just the Europeans, there were other communities here as well. So this was in fact a very multicultural area. Right. Let me show you how. Okay. 
This is the last surviving Chinese villa in this area, built by Tan Teng Nia. He was a sweet trader. It was built around 1900 and really goes to show that, in fact, this area was a very cosmopolitan area. So with Europeans and Chinese people, how did this place then become Little India? Well, for that, perhaps, we should move to the race course road. Okay. The race course, of course, was a European pastime. Europeans came in around the mid-19th century to watch race horses. But Indians were employed here as well, as stable workers and as people who rode some of the horses. So many Indians began to move here. Some of them, over time, began to set up shops here. Around the late 19th century, people began to purchase property in this area. So it is at this point in time where the concentration of Indians begins to grow. We're now at Racecourse Road, where 10 years ago, because of whatever happened, is now known as Riot Zone. It's very unfortunate, the impact on this place, but I think what is forgotten sometimes is the very rich heritage of the area. A riot has occurred at the junction of Racecourse Road. Sparked by the and death Shiro of Indian national Saktivel Kumaravelu, the riot involved... It was Singapore's first riot in 40 years. Over 300 migrant workers were involved. By the end of it, 62 people were injured, dozens of vehicles were damaged, and guess who witnessed these firsthand? Action! Naveen, our producer. So you were there when it actually happened? Yeah, I was there, right from MRT. I just came out yeah. and I saw this whole ruckus that was happening here. At first I thought it was a party that I wasn't invited to. Then I heard like loud thuds, bottles breaking. Mm. I was like, okay, something's wrong. I just took a peep and there was people throwing bottles at a bus. Yeah. That freaked me out. I quickly ran to my mum's shop. My dad decided to take out his phone and he decided to film it. Do you feel as if it damaged the beauty and reputation of Little India? Right after the riot, mm. right, there was a huge damage to India. On social media, people were giving racial remarks about Indians. They were telling the migrant workers should go back. And I had my own personal encounter too. So I was uh, in school and I was trying to get a cab to come to Little India because I stay here. And my mom's shop is here. None of the cabs stopped. About seven to eight cabs are in a flag. They didn't stop for me. And those who stopped also, they refused to come to Little India. When I say Little India, the reaction is, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, OK. Businesses took a huge hit. One of the biggest uh, customers over in Little India, and also from my mom's shop, with other migrant workers, mm. especially on Sunday, she would have a huge profit just on Sunday. But right after the riots, they were not allowed to come here. After a while, she couldn't afford the rental. She had to close down. But there are still some hidden gems in Little India that are operating since the riot. Mm -hmm. They did not close their doors. For example, Komala Villas. Ah, OK. I know all about them. I love the puri over there. So is that for lunch today? Of course, that's our lunch. Ah, I'm looking forward to lunching. Wait, what am I doing here in their kitchen? Uh oh, sorry. Mistake. Ah! There are approximately 70 Indian restaurants in the vicinity surrounding Sarangan Road and its adjacent streets. I'm lunching here at one of the oldest Indian restaurants in Singapore. Ah, yes. Thank you very much. I never ordered lime juice. Hi, it's okay. Hello. My name is Raja. Welcome to our restaurant. Oh, it's your restaurant? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, have a seat, sir. Have a seat. No one told me I'll be dining with the owner of Komala Villas. Hello. Um, I've been coming here since a kid. What do you think set your restaurants apart from others here in Little India, which I walked past so many earlier? Yeah, we get all our cooks from India and they are well trained. And some of them start getting training as young as seven years old. My grandfather and my father used to go around to India and taste the food. If the taste food is good, they actually call out the guy and then pass them a name card and then that's how they get people in back then. So you got tourists, you got Singaporeans, you got migrant workers here as well. Have you served any celebrities? Yes, uh, I think one we are famous for is our Prime Minister Lee back then brought over the Prime Minister of India mm. and he visited Prime Minister Modi mm -hmm. to our restaurant in 2015. As a kid till now, Puri is my favourite to have here at Komala Villas. But aside from Puri, what else is your most popular dish? We are very well known for over 20 varieties of dosas and even that uh, Masal dosa is one of our most popular dishes. 
How many masala dosas do you sell in a day? Dosas, uh, we sell like over 400. Wow! Yeah. Do you think for this show I can get exclusive access to your kitchen to see how it's being prepared? Yeah, okay, why not? So, this is Fonea. Mm -hmm. He's my head chef. Okay. He's been working with us for 30 years and he's been in this line for 60. So, today you will be assisting him. Okay. By the way, he doesn't speak English. So, good luck with him. Okay. Alright, sir. Uh, uh, konjo tariyo. Okay, no problem. Rumba, sorry. So it looks like I'll be learning how to make masala thosai from the master himself, but the communication, Gretchenella. Sir, this one, why are you throw like that? He's a kami one run. So one big like yeah. that. Okay. Oh, okay. Like that? Oh, sorry. Mistake. Ah! Where's your thosai looks smaller than that? Yeah. This is the Singaporean size tose, very small. But don't judge the tose by its size, okay? This one tastes good, I think. I like. Oh, oil. Okay. Can? Okay. Yeah. This is the smallest tose I've ever seen in my life. You order that, you get that, you refund straight away, please. It's my first masala tose. Very good. Okay. Woo! Asuba, pora ila purda erga. Adta adta pora ila, wala karta on. And that was probably Chef Bonea's way of asking me to try again. Ah, come on. And again. Aya. And again. Yeah, okay. Very good. Okay, masala. Okay, masala. So in the middle. And here's the folding part, which is scary for me. Ah, oh no! No, I brought the tose! No problem. Ah. No problem. So you heard of dine and dash, how about serve and dash, where I just put it on the table and run away. I don't even want to hear his comments, but you know what, let's go face the truth. Alright, Mr. Raja, um, wow. allow me to present and serve you a first timer making masala tose. It's... Half for me, half for you, how about that? Okay. <laughs> okay, be brutal, any thoughts and comments? No, actually this is uh, really not bad. No? For a first timer, yeah. For a first timer, I actually have seen some chefs who can't even do this. Oh, okay. But you got rings and all, it's actually quite good, uh, quite impressive. Thank you so much for letting me see how it's made. Even Gimme has prepared as well. Where else do you think I should go around here in Little India? I think we are not the only one who served uh, celebrities before. There's Anusha Flower Shop. I think they have seen quite a number of celebrities. Maybe you should check them out. Let's go to the flower shop then. While jasmine garlands are very common in Little India, one shop here created a garland closely associated with our national flower, the Orchid Garland. I understand you actually serve the big Singaporean celebrity? Yeah, I was given an opportunity for uh, the Olympian. Can you guess who? Is it Joseph Schooling? Yes. This is the garland I did for him. I add on gold ribbon because he symbolised the gold medal he has won for Singapore. So how did the orchid garland start, sir? Way back in 1994, there's quite a number of companies having dinner and dance as a Hawaiian team. So they requested for Hawaiian garland made of orchids. At any one time, I have to do 1,000 garland a day. 1,000 garlands in a day, sir. You must have very quick hands. I've been tasked by the producers to actually try my hand at garland making. Definitely, I'm willing to teach you how to make a garland out of orchids. Get the string, the stem, just put it. I, I I completely missed that, but okay. Like zap zoom zap done. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to teach you the flower knot. Okay, okay. this is your left hand. Just take out the string. Just place on top of your first finger and hold with your thumb. Okay, take out the stick on your right. Okay. Place on top of the string. Look at my stick. Which direction? Oh, oh my god, I'm messing up big time. Okay. Okay, just leave it everything. Okay, leave everything. What I thought was a simple knot turned out to be way more complicated than I imagined. So you see, you got it? Okay. You got a knot? That was one knot. The same amount of time I took to do one knot, he can finish the entire thing already. <laughs> I have almost 45 years of experience. And I have none. Just for 45 minutes, I guess. What's the fastest you've tied a garland? About two minutes. <laughs> Two minutes. All right, sir, I think I've done about maybe six sticks. Does this qualify me to graduate to flowers now? Hey, definitely. Now that I've mastered the knot, 
I just have to apply lesser pressure to not damage the flowers. Okay, you are there. You are there. Almost. Surprisingly, I got the garland going. Let's just say when you decide to call it a day, sir. Well, okay, guys, I want to retire. What happens to this store? Is there anyone to carry on the trade? I got two boys, age of 27 and 24, but they're not learning the skill. It's a dying trade. Slowly, it will be a day trade in Singapore unless foreign migrants want to take over the trade. I wanted to carry on doing this, but I want to see you in action. Can we please put Mr. J 7 to the test? I'm going to time you. Two minutes. Three, two, one, go. This is watching poetry in motion, guys. Look at that. And we're done. One minute and 30 seconds. Wow. Okay, wow, look at that. Thank you so much, sir. So it trades like flower garland making. I'm not surprised it is more or less dying here in Singapore because it is so niche, right? But we're getting help from our migrant workers to hopefully keep the trade alive. Eight of the nine flower shops I see on Buffalo Road alone have hired migrant workers tying garlands. Now, I've done flower garland making. I've helped the chef. What's next? Wake up at 4.30 a.m. tomorrow. On a Sunday, I've been out at Orchard after a late night out at 4 a.m. But little India, even Mustafa isn't 24 hours anymore. About time they changed this sign. I've been told to come to Krishna's free meals, but why this ridiculously odd timing on a Sunday? Hi Joachim, welcome to Krishna's Free Meals. Krishna's Free Meal is a soup kitchen which opens seven days a week for the migrant workers. They usually stay in dorms around Singapore, like some can be at Tuas, Changi, Pasir Ris. How did they come to this spot to get their breakfast at 6am? Many Indians, they are not used to try new food. They always uh, fix to their Indian traditional food. You give them something new, they won't take it. So the bosses drop them here, so they will get whatever food they want and they, they drive them back. How many meals do you serve on a daily basis? For weekday, we serve close to 2,000 breakfast a day mm. and lunch uh, close to 1,000. And then for Sunday, since many of them are not working, lunch will be around 2,000 plus. How do you prepare a meal for 2,000 people? You have to come and see for yourself. Okay, uh, so I'm guessing I'll be helping him cook today. Oh no, I can't cook but I can follow instructions. Is that okay? Okay, better be a good learner. I try. Thank you. <laughs> so that face of warning, you know, I'm scared already. <laughs> Alright, so I'm ready to go. Okay, first of all, you have to carry the rice. I was going to say I'm used to carrying 5 kilograms, but this is 25 kilograms. How many bags to carry, sir? For today, we have cooked 5 bags of rice. 5 bags! Okay, come, let's go. 125 kilograms of rice. Oh, yeah. 5 baskets of chickpeas and the vegetables. Multitude of ingredients, all for one lunch meal. I have been tasked to cook chickpea with soya masala, a protein and fibre-rich dish popular with the migrant workers. So with all the addition of the powder and all that, you can almost feel it getting a little bit hard to stir now. Well, I'm switching hands now. My right hand is tired from all that stirring of the paste. Wanna take a break? Sure. We have 2,000 people to feed. No break. Come on. So if my Tamil song knowledge does not fail me, it's like particle. Mama, pa, tu po. <laughs> po, mama, pa. Thank you. Oh. Ah, this is hot, man. Okay, ah, good. Okay. So how are you feeling? Okay. Oh. So I don't know how you do it. It's only my first time and I'm very naked and tired. I suggest you come regularly, you can get used to it. So the one we cooked just now, you bring out and stack outside. Okay. 
By 11 a.m., approximately 200 workers have arrived for their lunch. You guys are doing so much for migrant workers. Have they given back in their own way? Yes, they do. One group of them, when they get their salary, mm. they make it a point to come here and donate rice bags. Wow. It's their way of thanking us for giving them the meal. Do you get Singaporeans coming on a Sunday as well? Uh, yes, we do. Predominantly, they are elderly people. Uh, people on their hard times, mm. uh, different uh, nationalities as well. Another group that we are seeing is uh, Bangladeshis. There's a hidden gem around here in Little India where there's a place called uh, Little Bangladesh. You can check it out. Let me level with you. I'm extremely exhausted. It was hard work in the kitchen. But my heart is full looking at 2,000 plus migrant workers come on down here to collect their food and all that. But I've been energised at the thought of a little Bangladesh in Little India. Let's go have a look. But wait, I can't find it on Google Maps. Where is this little Bangladesh? Brothers, do you know where is little Bangladesh? Yes, come Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. Okay. Yes. Little Bangladesh. This little Bangladesh seems like a place every migrant worker is familiar with. How did I not hear of this place? Hello, are you lost? Yes, I am, sir, actually. Can you tell me where Little Bangladesh is? Sure, this is called Little Bangladesh. Oh. In between the Lembo Road and Daska Road. People okay. call it Little Bangladesh. My name is Joachim, and you are, sir? I'm Akem Mohsin, editor of Bangladeshi newspaper, Bangla Kanta. Bangla Kanta is Southeast Asia's only Bengali newspaper. This newspaper focuses on the Bangladeshi community and is published here in Singapore. It is written entirely by migrant workers from around the world. Why is this place called Little Bangladesh? In the 90s, huge amount of Bangladeshi come here to work in shipyard and construction sector. Mm. This is the only place the Little India, they get the similar food. So, Bangladeshi food shop, Bangladeshi grocery shop. Day by day, it's in peace. And now, most of the shop are Bangladeshi. Is there anything that can only be found in Little Bangladesh? A special item imported from Bangladesh. You can get anywhere else in Singapore. Okay, can you please show me? Yeah, okay. This is one of Bangladeshi shops. Mm -hmm. Vegetables, groceries, all imported from Bangladesh. Okay, let me show you Bangladeshi fish. It's called Himsha fish, a Bangladesh national fish. There's a national fish of Bangladesh. Yeah. I had no idea. Look at that. This is the mm -hmm. fish right here. So, what kind of dish they prepare with this? Fish curry, fish biryani uh, also can. Is it very expensive, this fish? It's expensive. How much? Yeah. Like 30, 30 dollars a kilo. 30 dollars a kilo. Wow, so this would be like 60 dollars, I think? Yeah. Two, two kilos. Yeah. So, the workers buy it, they cook for the entire dormitory, I guess. Little India is home to so many communities. Our migrant workers from India and Bangladesh, we have Europeans, we have the Chinese community as well. It's reflective of what Singapore should be. And hopefully, by coming to places like these, we learn from each other's cultures. And if you were to ask me, definitely a cool neighbourhood.